Alright, we are live. We're live. Alright, we're ready to call the meeting to order. Yes. yes. Call the meeting to order. Let me read the statement to begin with. The Covington Historic District Commission certifies that it is unable to meet in person due to COVID-19 restrictions. And that's why we're using this method today. <coughs> right. First, I'd uh, call the roll. Mr. Hartog? Here. Ms. Balls? Present. Ms. Ward? Here. Ms. Desjardins? Here. Mr. Link? I'm here. All right. Yes. Uh, the minutes from the March 10th meeting. Uh, has everybody had a chance to look at it and entertain a motion? I make a motion that we approve. I second. Is there a second? I second, Lisa. All in favor say, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Carries. The first case, 20-04-04 uh, CHDC has been withdrawn by the, peti by the petitioner. Same thing on the second case, 20-04-05 CHDC has been withdrawn from the, by, from the, by the petitioner. Case number three, uh, is case number 200406 CHDC and has been also withdrawn by the petitioner. Uh, we're ready for the next case, which is o, two, case number 200507 CHD request for an application for certificate of appropriateness for the material alterations for commercial property located at 126 East 21st Avenue, Covington. Request is to modify and remodel the existing building. Petitioner is Eric Aquistapace. Eric, I'd ask that you uh, read into the record your name and address for the record purpose. And then uh, if you tell us what you uh, uh, want to do. Okay, Before we start. Just one second. Um, go ahead and recuse yourself, um, Wendy. Yeah, I'll see y'all later. This is the only case, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, y'all take care. Okay. Right. Okay, go ahead, Adam. Bye. All right, my name is Eric Aquista Pace, and um, I'm here representing my father, Stephen Aquista Pace, on the house that he owns. It's 126 East 21st Avenue in Covington, Louisiana. And uh, so I'm here today to talk about uh, a house that we purchased uh, at 126 uh, East 21st uh, Avenue in Covington that was uh, purchased. We purchased it from the Simpkin family. Uh, our goal is to protect the uh, historic character of this house, which is a craftsman's cottage that was built in the 1920s in the subdivision of Paul Dulion. Uh, so our goal is to really, you know, preserve and, and leave the historical character of the house and really just fix what's broken. And then we do want to enclose the back porch so we can add a bathroom and laundry room to it. So all the original windows will remain. Uh, there's just one door that we were looking at removing on the front porch because there's two doors on the front porch that can be turned into a bedroom. So you don't have a door going into your bedroom. Uh, so what we do on the back porch, we would uh, take the screen out and replace it with matching siding. Uh, the, the roof would need, needs to be repaired, so we repair it and replace it with asphalt uh, shingles that's up there now. And on the front, so there's no landing that's coming off of the front of the uh, front you know, door of the house. So we would add a landing and handrails to the stairs. Did I lose something here? I just shared my screen. Oh, okay. I see it. I see it. Uh huh. Yeah, I see all of it. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, keep going, Eric. I'll just try to point as you're talking. Yeah. So, um, you know, if we can talk about the rear. We'll go through the rear porch first. So, enclosure of the rear porch for bathroom and laundry room. 
and it's a screen in porch now. Um, all the original windows will stay. And then the door that leads to uh, the bedroom on the front porch, which is right up in here. So you see this how there's one? two doors. Yes, there's two doors right there. And then so it goes into the bedroom. It. Yes. And I don't, you know, it, right now my architect drew it in as removing the door. Maybe, you know, you, maybe if we had a double window there that, you know, mimicked the rest of the windows, maybe that would look better. Right now it's just shown in as a single window, you know. I don't know if anybody has, you know, a thought on that. So, um, we are talking about the greenhouse, the right, greenhouse. Eric? Yes, yes. Okay, this one. That's the house right there. That's the front side. That's the left. Back. And this is the screen porch that will now be enclosed. That's correct, yes. And you're filling in the the screen opening with siding to match what's there now. Wood siding? No, it is actually aluminum siding. You know, uh, I guess there was a time error there 30 or so years ago, maybe longer. I mean, it's, it, the, the siding's old. It's over the top of it. Are you so going you back with aluminum, aluminum or you're removing that? Are you removing the aluminum and going back with something else, you know, or? McCarty Plank. Eric, are you still there? Oh, yikes. Hmm. We'll give him a minute. Have y'all, is anybody driven by this? Like, can you see the back porch from the, it's, from anywhere? No. It's, it's right across the street from the store. Uh-huh. Oh, he's really gone. Hmm. We lost Eric. He's gone. Well, but let's, mm -hmm. let's, give, let's give him a minute to re recover. Nikita's gone again. Okay. Does anybody know the history? There he is. Oh, there he is. Hi. Okay. Unmute, Adam. I mean, sorry, Eric. Okay. There you go. Good. Sorry about that. It's okay. It's another thing. So, so, okay. so Eric, th th this is Lisa. I had a, on that back, is the whole house the aluminum siding you're talking about or just what's on the back porch? The whole house is aluminum siding. Okay. And so is any of that, what, when you take the screen out, what are you going to fill in that with? What material are you doing? I would match it to the exact aluminum siding. So okay. it mimic the rest of the, the siding on the rest of the house. Um, do you know anything about the history of that? Like, why were there two front doors? At one point, was this commercial or this? No. So, from what I from what I research and abstract out, this house was always residential, and actually, it goes back to the Simpkin family. You know, I think I dated it back to like at least the '30s, if not before uh -huh. that. You know, I know that these houses were built in the mid 1920s. Uh -huh. You know, uh, and the house we're working on right now was built about the same time. And the, the property was, it was purchased from the Julian, Julian family uh -huh. that they built these houses on, you know. So that's where the neighborhood name you mentioned came from. Yes. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So if you go into the old Cummington maps, this, the, this block right here uh, was the subdivision of PJ Julian or, or Paul, Paul Julian. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's in the division of, what is it? Um, uh, uh, Morgan Commerce and Virtue, but this block right here was kind of subdivided out from what I gather uh, as residential. You know, and most of the houses are all that little craftsman style in this block that kind of mimic, it mimics a lot of the houses on this side of Covington in the St. John district, you know. So is that back porch visible at all from any streets or is it pretty secluded? It's very secluded. It's not visible by any of the streets. Okay. So what's behind it? 
and there's a lot behind it. So the, uh, the health food store uh, has a long lot that goes all the way through the middle of the block. Uh, yeah. So there's a vac- there's not a vacant lot. And there's a house on you know there's the health food store, but it's just a very long lot, and it's just woods behind it, you know. And then to the <laughs> to the one side you have uh, the old Kinsel House, which is the plumbing place right now, and then the dentist is to the other side. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, I wanted to ask about the canopy on the front. I couldn't tell from the drawings if that's going to remain. That kind it of is, it is going to remain. We're just going to fix. They have just some, you know, uh, material damage and stuff like that that we're going to, re- you know, replace and fix. You know, but it would be, you know, identical okay. to what it is now. Okay. There's a lot of, you know, the wood that is on the house has a lot of rot to it. It just needs to be repaired. You know, uh, mm-hmm. but other than the screen porch area, it just needs a lot of repair work to it. Uh, the house is in pretty good shape. You know, okay. it had some termite damage. Uh, the house we're working on now had a little bit more termite damage, but uh, this one they had their fair share. The, they're raised houses. Uh, actually, underneath the house is probably, you know, eight inches below the street. So um, drainage is an interesting thing for all of these lots. It's not just this one house. This whole block has kind of a, a drainage problem, but uh, we should be able to get it clean, you know, dried out underneath the house, you know. Okay. Um, is that one window where you're going to remove the door to the bedroom? Is It's hard for me to tell from the angle of the photograph. Is the one existing window center of that space? It's very close to center, but it's not exactly center. Uh-huh. It, it, it falls under, it it's falls under the center of the eave. It falls under the center of the eave, yeah. it looks like. Yeah, mm-hmm. okay. Oh, almost. It's yeah. almost. Mm-hmm. Okay. But I wouldn't be opposed to put. I wouldn't be opposed to. I'm having um, the Woodwright shop make windows that are identical to this for the other house we're doing right now. So I wouldn't be opposed if you, if it would look better to put a double window there that we can put a double window and match the exact historical window to the house. Mm -hmm. You know. It then the double window would still be centered. It would be centered. I would center it into the wall. Okay. 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 Commissioners, do you have any other questions? No. So, Eric, on this, can you see the front elevation? Yes. On my screen? Um, so that's the existing window. This is the door oh, you're removing and infilling. Yes. Um, let me see. Oh, that's, okay. That window yeah, they have the window. one we're seeing right here. That's correct. Okay. Mm-hmm. Is it going to remain a screen porch, even though yes. you wouldn't have access? Yeah, you know, there is access to it. So there's a, there's a you walk up from the side of the porch. Oh, I got gotcha. you. And yeah. this side on the, on the right. front porch side. There you uh-huh. go. Yes, right gotcha. there. Here, okay. where you enter into the. Yeah, yeah, nice. Nice. Okay. You know, I know where the original the original wall. So you see how the interior wall we're removing it back. So that is where the original interior wall was uh, uh-huh. in between the living room and the bedroom. Uh, yes. Uh-huh. So we're actually moving the interior walls back to identically where they were, where we can see where they were, you know, constructed originally when the house was done because it's not sitting underneath where the ceiling joist uh-huh. actually match and there's no header going across. So I mean. At one time or another, this house, you know, they had a small interior, you know, renovations and structurally kind of, you know, um, I mean, it's still structurally standing, but there's nothing underneath that actually where the joists, you know, meet. <laughs> so moving it back to where it originally was will help out the structural integrity of the house, mm-hmm. you know. And you think that that door going into that bedroom that you're removing from what you can is was that original or no? It does not look like it was original. Right, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. So probably originally, it really was just that one window. Well, it's either that or it was a double window. Or it was a double there. that they took out. Uh-huh. Yeah. Eric, have you investigated enough to see if there's any real wood siding under the aluminum siding? There is real wood siding underneath the aluminum side. I don't know what shape it's in, but there is real wood siding underneath. You know. And 
you just want to leave the aluminum in place and then you want to patch patch what the new work that you're doing and then were you going to repaint the aluminum uh, we were looking yes yeah, so I, I was going to just you know I, I wasn't going to change the color of the loom. I was just going to keep it the same color. I figured that house has been that color for you know, many years. And if I was going to change the color, I'd come back to y'all with the color. Yeah. Well, we, we, don't, we, don't, do we don't do color. All right, well, that's <laughs> good. That's colors. Good. I was just wondering about You should, material. though. You still colors. I think they're, they're an important thing. So. <laughs> Be a hue and cry. <laughs> there have been moments when we've wanted to do color. <laughs> I don't think it's a bad thing is to do colors. I mean, colors can mess up the whole house. Right. It's not our fault. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, but yes, I would like to keep the original colors of the house, you know. Uh, the problem with, you know, right now, I know the aluminum siding has been up there for so long. I mean, we know that the house had pretty, you know, intensive termite, you know, it, it's, anything's repairable with termite damage when I'm discovering on the house we're working on right now. Uh, but the, possibly the siding would have the termites in it, you know, termite damage in it too. Uh, we, you know, I might come back to you guys and say, listen, do you mind if we just take the left siding off and leave the shiplap siding? Uh, it would, you know, it's going to really take us in when, in, when we're in the middle of remodeling it to really get into the investigation of how bad it really is. If y'all mm -hmm. wouldn't be opposed to that. I think we, well, I, I personally prefer it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if, so, if something has been altered for 50 years or more, then that that's a different thing i doubt that aluminum siding is 50 years old you know it uh, would shock you on how old this i mean it may not be 50 years old but i bet you it's 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 pretty old you know right yeah but we but we would always you know want to go take things back as much as possible to the original particularly if the you know the siding right. is good or, or we also oftentimes approve hardy plank as an alternative, right. even though the reveal is not perfect, it's it, right. it's such a good material and and gives you the same look a lot closer. Um, so, you know, but this is a different, you know, it has been on there a long time and, you know, so. You know, we, we, here's the thing. Do you mind if I come back to y'all when we're in the middle of this and come back for a further review on the siding to see where sure. we're at with it? Please did do. you have a preference on the siding or were you just thinking that we would be leaning towards leaving the aluminum so that's the well the reason not consider it feasible to remove the aluminum you know as we did some investigation on this we know that there's siding underneath there we knew that of the termite damage so I would kind of sit there and lean to the side of leave the aluminum until I know that the, the I would like to actually show the real siding but you know I know that on you, you just don't know until you pull it up. I mean, right. it may be all termite okay. things where you really it'd be very tough to repair the siding and, and to replace it with anything that would look similar to this. Mm -hmm. You know, other than hardy board. Hardy board's a lot easier. Mm -hmm. You know. I don't you know, I, I like hardy board siding. I'm not, you know, knocking it, but I think there's not I personally and historically don't believe that there's much historical with hardy board. If I'm gonna do siding, I would rather just leave it the wood siding. Right, right. Well that would be our first preference. Yeah. Um, it, and, and if somebody were building something new in the historic district right. and they wanted to do aluminum siding, we would probably not approve that. I mean, or I, I personally would try to steer them to a, a more historically appropriate material. Sure. But, um, but, you know, this is, I mean, I get, you know, it's been up there a long time and I get that. Um, so, but yeah, otherwise, as far as I'm concerned, the other things that you're attempting to do. I don't really have an issue. If it turns out it looks like there was a double window on that front porch originally, then that would be awesome to put that, put it back like it was originally. Sure. I think it would look better, but if you get into there and it really only ever was that one window, then, you know, that's how it was. I mean, right. that's, that's my view on it. Okay. Well, you know, that's, so what I'll do is I'll come back to y'all whenever we're, we're through this a little bit further. And then on the siding, I'll go, I'll, I'll readdress the window. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was, yeah, I'd have to go look at the framing again. I know my architect, he was instructed to sit there and put everything back to its original. So it might've been a, just a single, mm -hmm. you know, and then on yeah. the siding, uh, I will go and actually pull some pieces off and kind of do a little bit more exploratory, you know, I mean, if it's on there and it's, if it's good, then hopefully the whole thing's good. You know, right. I mean, I guess that was a thing back in the, the 60s or 70s to put aluminum yeah. on a good siding instead of painting, maybe. 
You right. Know? I mean, this definitely predates vinyl sightings, so I know it was. You know, right. It, it probably yeah. comes back to the '60s or '70s. You know. And and I don't know, y'all chime in, but if if what you ultimately decide to do is remove the aluminum and go with the original siding, Nikita, would he even need to come back to us on that? If we approve it both ways. Uh huh. Okay. I, th I think that would work. Stephanie, we, we've got your, we got your email. Something oh, yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let me share it again. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. But uh, we really appreciate you doing that. That's it was helpful. Very, helpful. Uh, very okay, helpful. good. There we go. Okay. All right. Now, can I ask y'all another question? So, um, right now i have showing that the roof would be would remain uh asphalt shingles every other roof but not every other the kensel old kensel house is, is shingled roof the other roofs on the uh, on the block are metal roofs is there any you know i have to repair it either way is there a preference either way whether you want to see shingle or you know like a 5v crimp metal it's not to me, but Nikita, you're more up on there's, I remember when I was putting a metal roof on my office, there was some issues about the color of the metal, I think. I, I, I'm not, you know, keeping it consistent with, I guess, the other metal roofs might have been the issue. Yeah, so this, the house, the house to the left right here that we're working on, which was the florist or you know, it was typewriter repair store before that. We have approved right now to put metal on there. So that is going to be metal. The mm -hmm. dentist office is uh, metal. And the front of this house we're working on is metal, but the shing it shingles on top of that, you know. Mm -hmm. But I'm not I'm not opposed to either way. I was just, you know, kind of getting y'all's historical perspective on what, what would, you know, other people like to see in Covington. Uh, in the past, uh, the commission has tried to keep the metal roof patterns consistent with the roof lines uh, in the vicinity of where the new roof uh, is being proposed. And I think uh, that's where the issue with the color of the uh, roof came into play regarding uh, your uh, building. Uh, <laughs> There's, um, next door to me, Nita Kep's old house has a relatively new metal roof that was probably put on 10 years ago. And it's it's just the standard, you know, kind of gray silver color. Right, that's correct. Gal mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And it's yeah, a, definitely a lovely craftsman house that needs TLC. But anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Commissioners, any other questions? All right, I think we need to wait two minutes uh, now and let the public, uh, if, if there's any public out there, to uh, re respond and, and uh, give us any questions or opinions that they might, or statement that they might want to make. So uh, we'll wait two minutes and then uh, I'll try to entertain a motion. Just quickening that other. We only have quickening uh, motions on his assistant. Right now. So there, there is no public. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Nikita. Cal Center. Nikita, do we still need to wait, or do, do you? Uh, you may want to wait. Uh, maybe about seven minutes. Seven. Seven. Mm -hmm. And we will read into the record uh, that we received no email comments uh, from the public regarding any of the cases on the agenda. And we have not received any email comments uh, regarding the case that you are discussing currently. Uh, I guess in this new age of uh, technology, we have to be more patient. <laughs> yes. Okay. So are we waiting? Why seven minutes? I mean, that's a very specific amount of time. I mean, we wouldn't wait seven minutes if we were in real, you know, if we were together. Right. Uh, 
We're just trying to give, actually the Attorney General ruling actually said 30 minutes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, well, between cases. So we're okay. just trying to give the public time to respond because there is a delay uh, on you. Oh, uh, right. Mm -hmm. Two, two minutes. Right, minute. right. Two, we're two trying minute. to confiscate for the delay uh. in time. Because okay. people can also log into uh, the email, uh, our account, and email us. And also, we are streaming on YouTube, but there is also another link that a person can log on to to hear the meeting that was in the public notice that we uh, posted. And we're trying to allow for the delay time with the public. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. I mean, I figured there was an explanation, so that's good to know. So, Eric, this is going to wind up being a residence? We're going to use it as a rental house, yes. Oh, it, it's uh -huh. it's going to be a rental. I mean, that's what it was before when we purchased it, was being rented right. out. You know, right. um, uh, you know I, I guess down the road, if, you know, if it's best served as an office, I will come back to you guys and say, listen, mm -hmm. I need to sit there and do some things to modify this to a commercial office, you know, and we'll mm -hmm. re, we'll relook that, you know, but um, right now it's, yeah, I guess the, the highest and best use is residential rental, you know, right. it's just easier to do it that way right now, mm -hmm. you know, um, I mean, it's a pretty cool spot to live in Covington, I guess, you know? Yeah, I think it's... it's like, <laughs> it doesn't take long to get to the grocery store. No, right. Right. <laughs> right. You know. But you do take your life in your hands when you cross yes, you the do. streets. <laughs> you do. You do. And backing out is kind of tough, you know? Um, but other than those things, I mean, those things are coming to you got to watch for, you know? It's definitely downtown Covington. It's great. Yes. Yeah, it's you great. Know. So, um, you know, as we're working on the other houses, kind of need to kind of go back in time and and realize that these houses were placed there long before a store, or, you know, other a lot of other things. And you know, there was probably where our store is was oh, houses. You can see the number stuff, right. You know, here. we know that so, there was houses in the rest yeah, of the perimeter, yeah, but okay. yeah, the you know, right, right across the street. So it, it would be an interesting time to go back to and see uh, historically of what that area looked like at one time. How much longer? You know? yeah. So the, uh, the other house you're doing is also going to be residential rental? It, it's going to be commercial. Commercial. Yeah. I wonder if Ron, Ron Barthet, is that his name, has photos of this area? You know, like he keeps... I would love it if he did because I have not been able to find anything. I had talked to the right. Simpson family. Well, not, not the Simpson family. The, uh, it was the other family that has the house that we had now. And, okay. um, and they are looking for photos. And... Um, the Simpkins may have something on here. I'd have to get hmm. um, okay. okay. What I'm trying to remember what that group is that you know you could ask him. It's, it's I think well, it's, Ron. He, it's he has like uh, Ron's is it like Covington family something, and then Jack Terry with the Heritage Foundation sure. does yeah. a lot of has a lot of research on a lot of the buildings in town. Right. I think Ron's is called Remember Covington. I think. Right. Yeah, that's his. So, so the, the 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 other house is not in the historic district. No, they both are. They both are. Yeah. So, will you, will you be coming back with that one, or? I've already done the other one. The other one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, the other one, I, I, you know, maybe about a year ago, I came to you guys with, and actually, we're working on it right now. Uh, you know, actually, once we took the old house and took the stuff going and stuff like that, you can kind of, you know, you when you pass through Covington, you can kind of see what it originally looked like. It's it's kind of neat, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, there was brick and all in the front of it, you know. But these the houses, house. I guess, yeah. whoever built them, imagine the same person built that whole mm -hmm. cluster of houses right here, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Okay. So the lots aren't very big, but, you know, right. it's a nice little area of Covington, the whole square mm -hmm. is, you know. Yeah, it is. Okay, uh, for the record, we would like to read. Uh, we have no email questions from the public regarding uh, the case that we are discussing currently. All right, are, are we ready to take a motion? Yes. Yes, sir. All right, uh, I'll entertain a motion. I'd like to make a motion to accept plans as presented. Um, with 
two caveats that if they discovered that it's a double window that was the original thing there, that we will go ahead and pre-approve that. And if they decide to return to the actual wood siding after more exploration, that we are also um, willing to approve that. All right, is there a second? I second. I'll call the roll. Ms. Boyles? Yes. Ms. Ward? Yes. Ms. Desjardins? Yes. Mr. Link? Yes. Very good job. Congratulations. Good job. <laughs> Appreciate it. All right. Sure. That's great. Thank is you. There any, is there any other business to come before the commission? Uh, there's no other business before the commission. I would like to note uh, that we were approved and accepted with the certified local government continuation. Uh, our application was approved in March. As you know, we have to recertify every two years and we have been approved by the state. And I would like to thank each of you because of your hard work and dedication. It made, us, made it very easy for us to submit a new application to the state uh, for our certified government local program, which makes us eligible uh, for grants and eligible for uh, tax programs and tax abatement program. Thank you very much for your work and continue and going to camp and doing all the things that you were supposed to do as a commission. Thank you very much. Uh, we, we appreciate Thanks. the staff. We couldn't Thank do it without you. you. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Since no other business, uh, call the meeting adjourned. Thank you. All right, Thank guys. You. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. Bye-bye.